Today we're going to be building an outdoor weather station which takes temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, light and wind speed readings and then posts them to the cloud to access through a ThingSpeak dashboard. I'm going to use the ESP32 development board from DF Robot called the Fire Beetle. I've chosen this particular board because it's inherently designed for low power applications and to be powered by a lithium ion battery. So it's got a battery plug directly on the board and supports charging through the USB-C port. For the sensors, I'm going to use these Grove sensors by Seed Studios. They integrate all of the required supporting components, so you just need to make the connections between the sensor and your microcontroller. They use Grove plugs to plug into supported hats or boards, like the Arduino Maker IoT carrier board. I'm going to modify one end to make up a wiring harness that plugs into the pins on the Fire Beetle board. I'm going to use a pressure sensor that uses ITC communication, the DHT11 sensor that uses a digital pin, and the light sensor that uses an analog pin. I'm also going to make up an anemometer or wind speed sensor on the top, which uses a read switch to trigger an interrupt routine for each rotation. Let's start by assembling the components on a breadboard to test the connections and get the code working. The Fire Beetle board has a small jumper on it, which they recommend breaking if you're going to be using the board in low power applications. I couldn't find any information in the documentation on what this does but I presume it disables things like the onboard power LED in order to save power. I've connected the pressure sensor to the ITC interface on the board, the DHT11 sensor to pin 14, the light sensor to pin 36, and then the read switch to pin 0. The other connections are just to 5 volts and ground. I then wrote up a sketch to take readings from the sensors every 10 minutes and post this data to ThingSpeak. Between readings, the ESP32 is put into deep sleep mode in order to save power. This shuts down the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth communication modules as well as the CPU. You'll notice that all of the code is in the setup function and that the loop function is left empty. This is because the ESP32 only runs the setup function when operating in deep sleep mode, so only the code in this function is executed each time that it wakes up. I'm not going to go through the code in detail here, but I'll put a link to the blog post in the video description, and this will cover the code in a bit more depth. ThingSpeak have an Arduino IDE library to make posting data to their server a bit easier. You need to create an account on ThingSpeak first, and then create a channel for your data, which you'll then be able to generate an API key for. The API key is effectively the password for your ESP32 to be able to post data to your ThingSpeak channel, so the ThingSpeak channel knows that the data is coming from the correct source. I've created a weather station channel and then made a dashboard to view the channel data which I've put a gauge and a trend chart onto for each field. It's important to keep track of which fields are receiving which data sets from your ESP32. They are posted to a field number in your code and you'll then need to use this field number to display the data on your charts and gauges on your dashboard. I uploaded the code to the Fire Beetle board and the weather station started recording and posting data. Admittedly, I did have a few issues to resolve before it just started posting data. The ESP32 disables some of the analog inputs when using Wi-Fi, which I didn't know about. I also had to do some reading to get the deep sleep mode to work correctly, as it's quite different to the way in which the app mega chips on the Arduinos are put into sleep mode. The wake-up cycle takes about 20 to 30 seconds to complete, including the 10 seconds that the ESP32 waits to measure the wind speed data. I then removed the wiring from the breadboard and made up a wiring harness to plug into the fire beetle board using some header pins. The plugs are still on one end of the grove leads, so they can be plugged in or removed as needed. I used some female jumpers to plug into the ends of the reed switch once it's installed in the housing. Next I moved on to designing the housing. I wanted it to be as compact as possible. So I wanted to integrate the sensors and the anemometer into a single assembly. The design I came up with housed the ESP32 and battery in the base, with the sensors in a central vented compartment and the anemometer on top. I 3D printed the components in resin, so that I could print the sensor housing as a single piece, and I wouldn't have to build it up with each ring as an individual part. I'm not yet sure how well resin prints will hold up in the sun, I've done a bit of research on it and most say that it's a bad idea. Listing brittling and UV damage is likely to lead to failures. 
But I've also seen a couple of tests where people have actually left prints outside through the sun, rain and snow and they didn't seem to have any visible damage on them. So I thought I'll give it a try and see how long it lasts. I printed the parts out in regular PLA style white resin. I cleaned them up and then allowed them to cure in the sun for a day, as I don't yet have a curing chamber. I've recently reviewed this Voxelab Proxima SLA printer on my blog. It's a really good quality entry level resin printer. If you're looking to get into SLA printing, I definitely recommend checking it out, and I'll leave a link in the video description. Now that all the components are ready, we can start assembling the weather station. I started out by mounting the temperature and humidity sensor on one side of the sensor stand, then adding the light and pressure sensor to the other side. I already added the mounting holes into the 3D print, so each sensor just needs to be screwed into place. I then installed the reed switch, bending the legs 90 degrees to fit into the holes on top. I added some print resin to fill up the void and seal the holes through the lid, and then cured it with a small UV light. Next I assembled the wind speed sensor. This is mounted onto the top of the weather station using an m 5 by 20 mm screw, along with two nuts and two small bearings. I also added a small stack of magnets into the anemometer to activate the reed switch on each turn. The second nut holds the bearings in place, but shouldn't squash them. They should still turn freely. The anemometer is then just pushed onto the bearings. If your bearings are tight, put a drop of thin oil onto them first. I then plugged the wiring harness onto the reed switch and the three sensors, and then connected it to the fire beetle board. Since this project is battery powered, and we'd like to know how long the battery is going to last, I measured the power consumption for the whole setup using a multimeter. The boarded sensors use about 30 to 60 milliamps when running, and just over 120 milliamps when connecting and posting data over Wi-Fi. When in deep sleep, this goes down to about 1.2 milliamps. It's still higher than I was hoping for, but seems to be related to the power being drawn by the components and sensors in addition to the fire beetle board. I'll be looking into a way to use an optocoupler to turn the sensors on only when the board is awake. With this setup, the weather station should run on a single 2500mAh battery for a little under 2 months, which is not too bad, but is still a hassle to remember to charge. I could also get around this by adding a small solar panel to the weather station to charge it every day. I'll need to do some further testing on the actual wind speed to calibrate the anemometer, but for now it registers each revolution and is able to turn in a light breeze, which is a good start. The weather station can now be mounted with some screws or cable ties through the base. Now I just need to leave it out and see how well it records the weather. After a couple of hours it looked like it was all working well. As luck would have it, this was the most still weekend we've had in months, so there was little to no wind to test. There was a light breeze once or twice that got it running, and it did register a reading, which is obviously way higher than the actual wind speed, so it will need some adjusting. I then left it overnight. I got some consistent results overnight, and the light sensor picked up the sunrise quite sharply. Again, one or two wind spikes in the morning were way higher than the actual wind speed would have been. Overall, I'm really happy with how it came out. I'll post an update on how the resin print is holding up in a month or two's time, if it doesn't break before then. Hopefully we'll have a few windy days soon, and I'll be able to adjust the timing and get some reliable wind speed results as well. Let me know what you think of the weather station, and what you'd do differently in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.